How's it going guys, I'm Theo Joe, and today we've got some cool important Android settings that you probably want to know about and you might want to change depending on preference. In the past I made a video about Android settings you definitely want to change and I'd recommend that video, but these are going to be more coming down to preference, maybe you want to change them, maybe you don't, but you should at least know about them. A few of these I have mentioned in the past, so some of you already may know a couple of these, but again these are settings you should know, so if you do, that's great. And I'll also point out that I am using Android 9, so if you're using a previous version of Android or a different skinned version like with a Samsung or something like that it might look a little bit different but most of these settings should still be there and you can always do a search for the settings in the settings app and it should come up regardless of how to get to it. All right, starting off, number one. Now this one's gonna be a bit of an exception. I am gonna tell you, you definitely should enable this one, so I kinda lied at the beginning, but the other ones will be preferences. But this one is called Find My Phone. It's kinda similar to Find My iPhone on iOS. You might not have known that Android has the same feature, but you wanna make sure it is enabled. So to get to this, you go into the settings, and then you go to security and location, or it might just be called security or something on yours, and then find my device, and make sure that is turned on. You can then go to android.com slash find and you'll log into the same Google account you used to log into your Android phone. You'll have a lot of options. You'll be able to see where the latest GPS location is and you'll also be able to do things like play a sound, maybe in case it's just between the cushions or something, you can't find it. And you could also do things like securing the device so it kind of locks it down and shows a message on the screen. Perhaps if you want to show a number to call, like your friends that's with you or something like that, or you could just erase it completely if you think the phone is gonna be gone for good. All right, moving on to number two, we have individual contact ringtones. Maybe you didn't know, but you can actually set individual ringtones for certain people, maybe important family members or something like that. So to get to this, you go into the contacts app and then you click on the contact you want, and then at the top, you can click on the little options menu drop down thing and then go to set ringtone. And then here you'll have the option to choose one of many different possible ringtones. Again, this is gonna look different depending on your version, but I'm pretty sure that every version of Android, even if it's a Samsung or LG, should have this option. All right, number three, we have Smart Lock. And this can be found in the security and locations menu and then Smart Lock. And this will allow you to do a few different things. Basically, it lets you keep your phone unlocked or unlock it in certain conditions, such as with a trusted location. So you could set your house address to be a trusted location, and that way, whenever your phone GPS shows it's there, it will keep the phone unlocked. You can also do trusted devices. So when it's connected to certain Bluetooth devices, such as your car, it will stay unlocked, and that way, if you're in some area or with a device like in your car that you know no one's gonna be stealing your phone or if it leaves that area, it'll automatically lock. So it's a little bit of convenience in trade for security. All right, up next we have different color modes for your screen you can set. In stock Android, you can get this by going to display and then colors. But again, if you aren't on stock Android, like with Samsung or LG, they almost all have this setting as well. By default, most phones and by all manufacturers are set to a little bit extra saturated because when they're on display at the store, you know, people like to see eye-popping colors, vivid colors. It just looks nicer, but it's not necessarily as accurate. So you can have a couple options here. You can do natural, which is technically gonna be the most accurate. You can do boosted or even saturated, which is gonna be just be extra colorful. So if you don't care about the color accuracy of stuff you're looking at, but you do like super vivid looking colors, maybe this is one to change to be even more saturated. All right, the next few are gonna be in the accessibility menu. There's actually a couple cool settings in here you might not have known about. So the next one is gonna be the magnify feature. So you can get to this by going to accessibility, magnification, and then magnify with triple tap. So this basically, like it says, allows you to triple tap the screen at any time and it will zoom in. So if you're trying to look at something that's too small and that image isn't zoomable in whatever app you're using, this is another option. And you can use two fingers at the same time to scroll around the screen. You have to use two fingers because all the normal gestures will work. So if you're swiping down from the top of the screen, it'll still bring up 
the quick settings menu, for example, unless you use two fingers to scroll around and scroll down. So this might be one that you can find useful every once in a while. The next setting, which also can be found in the accessibility menu, is inverted colors. And this will appear under color inversion as a toggle. And conveniently, after you toggle this setting on and off once, it will actually now appear in the quick settings menu in the drop down, so you don't have to go into the menu and dig down into the settings every time if you want to enable it or disable it. So anytime maybe you're using an app, you're a fan of dark mode, but your favorite apps don't have it, then you can just bring down the quick settings menu, enable inverted colors, and then anything that's bright will now be dark. So it's kind of like a jury rigged version of dark mode that you can use anywhere. The third accessibility option you might want to change is the touch and hold delay. And this can be found in that menu and then touch and hold delay. And when you click it, you'll have the option to do either short, medium, or long. And this just means how long you have to hold down your finger on something before it pops up whatever context menu, whether that's highlighting something or going to delete it or whatever anywhere in Android. So if you happen to be someone who does a lot of copy and pasting and you wanna make it not take as long, you can set this to short, or maybe if you find yourself constantly accidentally doing the hold when you don't want it to, you can set it for longer than default and then you won't do it as often accidentally. Up next, number eight, this one has to do with the keyboard and this will allow you to always show the number bar at the top of the Google keyboard. So it makes it a lot easier to type in numbers. It'll save you a tap or two. To get to this, you kind of have to dig a little bit into the settings. So you have to go to the settings menu and then language and input, virtual keyboard, Gboard, preferences and then you'll see the option for number row or if you want to shortcut that you could just open up the gboard app and it'll take you right to the menu where you can go to preferences from there it's a bit short so after you toggle this on like i just said it'll take up a little bit more space but it will always show that number row so this is useful if you type in a lot of numbers or something or if you do want to keep that extra space you can toggle it off all right, coming near the end, we got a couple more. So number nine is animation scale. This is gonna change how fast the animations are in Android, and you can sh actually shorten them so things look a little bit snappier. Things don't take as long to open, for example. And to get to this, you're gonna actually first have to enable developer options if you haven't done this already. To do it, it's really easy, don't worry. All you have to do is go to about phone, and then find the build number of Android. It'll say build number, and all you have to do is tap on that a bunch of times, and eventually it will say you're now a developer, and you'll get a new option in the settings menu called developer options. And this might appear in different places. It might be in the main settings app, or in the case of Android 9, you have to go into the system menu first, and then developer options will show up under there that you can go to. If for some reason you can't figure out how to enable this or you can't find it, just go on Google and search the model of your phone and then developer options and it should come up. I believe every Android phone has the developer options regardless of the manufacturer. In any case though, the setting we're looking for is in those developer options and you'll scroll down and you'll actually see a few that are called animation scale and they're gonna have a couple different names for different types of animations. And the default setting is going to be 1x, which just means it's one times as long as the default. So obviously that's one. And if you want it to be shorter, it would be 0.5x, which just means it's half the time of normal, so it'll be faster. Be careful with this setting though. If you tap like 10x or something, it'll literally take 10 times as long to run every animation, including setting it back to 1x. So it might take you a while if you click the wrong one, pretty much just stick to the 0.5x or 1x, and that again is just gonna be preference. So again, if you put this down on 0.5, things will just look faster. It's not gonna make your phone actually faster, but if you do have a modern high power phone that doesn't lag at all anyway, then it might be able to handle these 0.5x faster animations, and it will make your phone seem at least a lot faster, especially when opening things up. All right, finally, number 10, we have a feature called screen pinning, which basically allows you to keep one app open and not allow someone to switch apps without your code or whatever. And this is good maybe if you're going to hand your phone off to someone to play a game and you don't want them digging through the rest of your phone, very useful. To get to this, you go to the security and locations menu and then screen pinning. And I'd also recommend setting the ask for pin before unpinning option to be on. And to actually use this feature, what you do is you bring up the app switcher and it's gonna be different depending on the version you have. In Android 9, you tap the icon at the top for the app and then it'll bring a drop down with an option to pin and then that'll do it. And then in previous versions of Android, 
you tap the pin icon that'll show up in the bottom right if you have this option enabled and that'll come up. And when you want to go and unpin that app, what you do is hold the back button and the app switcher square button at the same time and then that will unpin it and ask you to unlock the phone with your code. So those are 10 settings in Android you definitely wanna know about and you might wanna change them, maybe you don't, it's up to you. And again, I would also recommend checking out my other video about Android settings to definitely change and I'll just have that pop up on the screen right here that you can click on. Let me know what you think down in the comments, guys. If you wanna subscribe, I make a few new videos a week so it should be worth it. And until next time, be seeing you.